My least favorite step to completing a quilt is definitely putting on the binding. I just find it such a boring process. It's very tedious and by the time I get the quilts quilted, I just want to be done a lot of the time. So along the way though, I have found some tips and tricks to binding a quilt that has definitely made the whole process a lot easier for me. So I'm going to share those tips with you in today's video and my whole process with putting a binding on a quilt. So let's get started. Now I always cut my binding to 2.5 inches by width of fabric and I do trim off the salvage on both ends. I do want to share my first tip with you and that is this fun quilting calculator. So this is how it looks when you first log in and it is I think Robert Kaufman. You have a lot of different things you can use here and I use it quite often for finding out how much backing I might need for a quilt, how much piece, how many pieces to cut, a lot of different things. But right here you can see it also helps you with binding. So First, it wants to know the width of your fabric, and I just put in 43 inches because, yeah. So I just, instead of measuring it, I just put what the average is. And then it wants to know your strip width, and I did two and a half inches. That's usually what I do. And then it wants to know the width and length of the quilt, and mine is 47 inches by 48 inches. It's almost a square. And then it'll just calculate for you how many strips you need to cut, about how much yardage you need for that, the length um, of binding needing, all that. I just find it really, really helpful because I don't want to do the math on my own. So that is my first tip to you for you is to grab an app like this. So let me. All right. So now that I have my strips cut and I have five of them cut. What I do is just sew them right sides together and I just sew a seam across there and they're all going to be linked together in a long, long piece of fabric. So when I'm sewing the binding, I will often back stitch at the start and finish of the binding area. So I just feel like because I'm going to be pressing this together and all that, I don't want any of those seams to come undone. So it just makes me feel better to do that. Now, instead of doing two more, I take the end of the binding strip that's on top and I just move it over right side up and put the next binding strip down on top of it with right sides together. This will just create a continuous long strip and it just makes it a little bit easier for me. So here again, here is that top strip there. I just fold it over with right side up and put the next strip on and just sew across. I sew a quarter inch seam across. All right, so now I'm gonna bring my binding over here to my pressing area and I'm going to press the binding, especially pressing right along the seams, pressing those open. I like to press them open here. I am usually not one to press seams open, but I feel like here when you're gonna be sewing this binding onto a bunch of layers of your quilts that it makes a little more sense to press them open. If you don't want to, you do not have to. This is your binding on your quilt. Do it how you would like to. All right, so now I'm gonna get out this Quilted Hearts binding tool. This is something that I saw Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance show on her channel, and I was so excited about it because anything that makes binding easier, I am all about. So let me show you how this works. So what I do is I get my binding started. And let me tell you, this is something, so I have 
another iron that I didn't think to get out that's heavier than this one. This one is cordless and really lightweight. This definitely works better on my other um, iron that's a lot heavier, my Rowenta. But I fold it in half with wrong sides together to get it started. And then I put it through these little rubber loops here. And that just helps me get it started. Now, what you do is you set your iron on here and just pull the binding through and it helps get it all nice and even and it presses it so well. Well, one thing to keep in mind though is this mat can get super hot doing this. So try not to touch it if you don't need to. But you'll see that this moves a little bit because my iron is just not that heavy. So definitely if you have an iron like this one but have like a backup heavier iron that's corded, those work really well with this little mat. So I just pull the binding through one side and then I use my hand on the other to kind of fold it and get it started on going through. All right, so you can see where the iron was and it is all heated up there. So don't touch it, just put it out of the way. And there is our pile of binding. All right, so here is the quilt that my binding is going on to. This is the front of the quilt, and I actually like to attach my binding to the back of the quilt. So what I do is I lay my binding with the raw edges together, the raw edge of the quilt and the raw edge of the binding, and then I'll start sewing. I'm gonna leave a tail here as I sew because we need to bring the binding together at some point. So if you leave a nice long tail, you'll have enough room to bring the binding together and not have to struggle as much <laughs> sewing those pieces together. So I'm gonna start sewing and I just use my quarter inch foot just as I did with piecing and all that. I'll start sewing and back stitch really well because when I bring the binding together, I don't want those stitches to start coming undone. So I'll start sewing all the way around the quilt and at the corners, I'll, I'll make sure to show you what I do there. Another tool that comes in handy is having a glove that has kind of grips on it to help move the fabric through a little bit easier. I started sewing and I was like, something doesn't feel right. And I remembered that I did not put my glove on. All right, so I'm approaching the corner on this quilt and I like to put a stiletto here just so I can see right where the edge is. And I wanna sew up to about a quarter of an inch away from the corner. Now, when I get there, I leave the needle down so that'll help hold my spot. And I raise the presser foot just enough where I can turn and face the needle toward the corner of the quilt. And then I'm gonna sew to the corner of the quilt. And I backstitch here. I backstitch a lot, I guess. <laughs> so I snip the thread. And now I'm going to turn the side of the quilt that we wanna sew down toward me. I'm gonna raise the binding up. And you see I have like a mitered corner going on here. And after I fold the binding up and kind of finger press that mitered corner. I'm gonna fold the binding back down. And you can see that my fold is kind of flush with the part of the quilt that we already sewed. So when I have it nice and straight, I'm gonna put it back under my presser foot, put the foot down, I'm right along the raw edges again I'm gonna be sewing a quarter inch away and I'm gonna start sewing again. Back stitch, of course. And that's how I'm going to handle all my corners on this quilt. So I'm gonna sew all the way around the quilt, doing the same steps at each corner until I get to the side where I started. And I'm gonna leave about a foot gap there 
between where I started my binding and where I end it, and I'll show you what we do there. All right, so I have the binding sewn onto the back of the quilt, and you can see I left a gap here. So I do this in the easiest way possible. I don't use any tools. I don't do anything fancy. I just line the edge of my quilt up on my mat on a line and in the kind of middle of the gap that I left, I will cut the binding at one of my one inch lines and then I lay the other binding strip over it and I cut it so that there's a about a half an inch gap over the two. That's it. That's all I do. <laughs> I Like I said, I try to keep this as simple as possible because it is not my favorite part of the whole quilt process. Tell me in the comments, by the way, what is your least favorite part of the whole quilt process? My favorite has to be piecing the quilt and cutting the quilt, like all the, the fabric. Uh, my least favorite has to be pressing the fabric and the binding. The binding being number one least favorite. I'm going to save these scrap pieces of binding because at some point I'll make a scrappy quilt and I can use these pieces to piece together and bind a quilt. All right, so I have this gap here and then I'm just going to bring them right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam across here. If I'm not feeling like I did a great job cutting these, I will sew it a little um, generous quarter inch seam just so that I make sure I don't have any fabric bunching together there. After I sew that quarter inch seam, I'm gonna press the finger press the seam open and then just sew the binding on to the back of the quilt where that gap is. All right, so after getting my binding sewn completely to the back of the quilt, I like to press it away from the back of the quilt. I just feel like it helps me make sure everything on the back is lined up nice and crisp. So I just go around the whole quilt, just pressing the binding. All right, so now we're back to the front of the quilt. And what we need to do is fold the binding over to the front so we can top stitch it. To keep it in place while I go to top stitch, I like to use the steam -a seam two quarter inch to hold the binding in place for me. Now it's a little bit more of a added step in the whole process, but it really helps me keep the binding really nice and even. So I have some of the steam seam too here and I'm just going to lay it right across the edge of the quilt where the binding will fold over and I'm just going to go all the way down to the end. Now it is a little sticky but it doesn't stay in place perfectly while you go to iron it. So I'm just cutting it off here at the end where the corner is. I know you can't see that because uh, camera angles and then I'm just going to add just the tiniest touch of heat across here because it'll keep it in place a little better you can see I didn't press for like 10 seconds or anything long or crazy just a little touch of heat across and then we're just going to peel the tape paper layer off and just leave this sticky strip under and this can be like one of the trickiest parts is getting <laughs> this off. All right, so now we're just going to fold the binding over and add heat a little bit longer to keep it in place. So here I'll do about 10 seconds in each of these areas. So I'm just folding the binding over and adding some heat to keep it in place. All right, so now that we're around and over to where the corner is, 
and show you how to manage that. And it is really easy, especially with this seam, steam seam. So I'm just going to put a smaller section just so I can show you the corner. And just add a touch of heat to keep it in place, just as before, and then peel the protective paper off. Now, with the corner here, we're just going to fold it over. Oh, and I chose the hardest corner I could choose because I just happened to get a seam right on the corner there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a seam here. So I'm going to fold the binding over and we're just going to kind of try to get that corner to miter nicely. And there's so much bulk there on this one. I don't know if I'm going to get it really perfect because there's a seam right on that corner. I got it pretty close. It's definitely not going to be a perfect one, but I didn't want to rip out any of any of the binding I had put on to redo it so the corner wouldn't have a seam right at it. I just went with it. But so at the corner, you just fold it down and get that mitered angle there. Mine's off on this one because of that bulky seam. I could keep messing with it and try and get it perfect, but let's see. I'll go ahead and go down to this other one and we'll see how that one looks. All right, let's work on this corner. We're gonna add the seam at seam if I can find the <laughs> tape end. Add it right on the edge, just a little bit of it. Add just a touch of heat to hold it in place. Peel back the protective layer, and then we're just gonna start folding the binding over the kind of steam -a seam glue up to the corner. And it was just really easy to miter that corner there with everything being held in place. Just fold it over and it'll just meet beautifully, especially when there's not a bulky <laughs> seam there. That was much easier. And look how pretty that binding's already turning out without the top stitching. It's just all held in place for you. And it makes this so much easier to take over to the sewing machine and top stitch around it. So I'm gonna get the rest of the binding in place with the steam -a seam and then we'll meet at the sewing machine to finish this quilt up. For this step on the quilt binding, I like to put on my eighth inch presser foot. I feel like it makes it so much easier to sew this part of the quilt because I can just line it right up with the edge of the binding. So I'm just gonna put that on and I'm actually going to make sure I have enough thread in my bobbin to go all the way around the quilt. And I don't think I do, so I'm glad I checked it. All right, so now that I have a bobbin that is full and have rethreaded everything, I'm gonna show you how I start sewing along my binding. So I bring a long tail of thread up from the bobbin and from the needle and I'm gonna drop my needle down and I'm going to pull the thread from the bobbin up because I like to sink my threads into the quilt after I sew the binding on just so it keeps everything all neat and tidy. All right, so after I bring that thread up, I'm gonna hold it down and I'm gonna put my grippy glove on and I'm just gonna start sewing around the binding. So I have the side of my eighth inch foot lined up with the folded over edge of the binding. So I'm just gonna sew around. <laughs> 
right, and so now that I got to a corner, I'm just gonna sew up to the corner. And right when I get on the mitered edge, I'm gonna leave my needle down, raise my presser foot and turn the quilt and sew along the other edge. So I'm gonna sew all the way around the quilt just in that same fashion until I get back to where I started sewing. All right, so you can see I'm almost back to where I started sewing and I'm actually going to tie some knots here and sink this starting thread into the quilt just so that it's not in my way when I finish off sewing this part. So I'm just tying some knots here and then I'm gonna put my needle on and I'm just gonna try to get my needle right in where I have the knot and I'm only gonna go into the batting and under the top fabric. So I'm not gonna go through the back of the quilt. And then I'm just gonna gently tug that knot into the batting and there I go, I've hidden the starting threads to the binding and I'm just gonna snip that off. And then I'm gonna finish sewing across here. So I'm gonna try to stop right on that first stitch. I'll raise this up and see if I'm there. It looks like I'm right in the middle of it. Sometimes that can happen depending on your stitch length. It may not be perfect, but as long as it is close. So I'm gonna raise the needle up and I'm going to leave myself some thread so that I can do the same thing as before. I'm gonna put my presser foot down because it'll hold my quilt in place for me. And I'm gonna pop that bottom thread up to the top. And then I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, just tie some knots. And I'm gonna find the hole that the knot is closest through and run my needle under the first layer of fabric in the batting and then I'm going to check and make sure I didn't go through the back of the quilt any and just pull the threads through and kind of pop that knot into the fabric and then just trim off the threads and there we go, the binding is done on this quilt. All right, so just like that, the binding on this quilt is all finished. I really hope all of my tips and tricks are going to help you make putting the binding, the finishing touch on your quilt just a little bit easier. And if I missed any tips that you think are very useful on putting a binding on a quilt, please let me know about them down in the comments of this video. And I'll also have links to where you can purchase any of the items I used in this video down in the description as well. But before we go, let me show you some close-ups of the finished binding on this quilt just so you can see how it turned out. All right, so here are some of the corners on the quilt. So here are two that turned out really, really good. And just as full disclosure, here are some that turned out a little more wonky, not bad. I just veered a little bit there. And then here is the one with that seam. So it didn't quite meet up at the corner just because of all the bulk there. Now, here is how the binding looks on the other side where we folded over. Because I use a quarter inch to sew the binding to the back of the quilt, the stitches that go around the binding go a little past the binding. So they don't go right along the ditch like some people like. Now, I don't mind that because whenever I've tried to get my stitches to go right in the ditch along the binding, it will stay in it sometimes, then sometimes it'll veer on and sometimes it'll veer off. And I honestly really hate the way that looks. 
I would rather it be just outside of it because when it gets closer and then farther away, I don't think it stands out as much as having it go hidden onto, off of. I just, this makes me happier. That's why I do it this way. I think it's easier and it doesn't bother me as much. I don't think it's as notable, noticeable seeing it get closer and farther away. That is just personal preference. If you want to do an initial wider stitch when you sew your binding onto the back so that that stitch can stay hidden in the, in the binding seam, definitely do that. I honestly can't remember how wide you need to sew the binding onto the back. It's like three eighths of an inch, carry the one, something like that. I don't know. Um, I don't remember because I quit doing that. It stressed me out. So I just sew it on this way and I love the way it turns out every time it works for me. All right. So there are my tips for sewing a binding on a little bit easier. So binding made simple. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.